Hi, I'm KS Garner, and you're listening to the Solo Network Podcast. Today, I'll be speaking with the creator and illustrator of the upcoming comic, Peppermint Desert, Sean Peacock. Welcome, Sean. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Well, thank you for joining me. Thanks for responding back, because normally when I send emails to people's website, I guess it goes to the spam folder or something, because no one ever really responds. And I'm yeah, kinda it, can, it can be nervous dodgy, about doing yeah. that. But um, outside of my introduction, who is Sean Peacock and what are you about? Well, uh, I am an artist, I'm a storyteller, I'm an illustrator. Um, I'm currently finishing up my last year at the College of Creative Studies in Detroit. Um, and I'm really just kind of uh, starting to get into the groove of making my own comics, uh, telling my own stories, really making the art that I want to make. Um, which is all tends to be centered around kind of wacky uh, retro inspired fantasy settings. Um, a lot of inspiration from music and uh, old comics uh, and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, we can get more into, I guess, what inspired your, your yeah, art yeah, style. For sure. But um, what is Peppermint Desert about? Yeah, so Peppermint Desert is the story of Mickey and Saturday, who are these two bandits, like career criminals, who have the superpower of luck. Uh, anything that they want pretty much goes their way. Uh, and they become like master criminals because of that. Uh, and they decide that they want to do something good for a change. So their idea of that is they rob a casino with the intention of giving all the money to an orphanage in the middle of this place called the Peppermint Desert. Uh, so they set out into the desert, and when they get there, they are chased by a devil named Balthazar the Incessant, who sees their luck as a crime against nature and wants to drag them to hell and torture them for all eternity. Um, so the bulk of the story is them, uh, you know, racing across this like hellscape, surreal desert, being uh, chased by a devil in some cool old cars. Well, can you, uh, I guess, elaborate a little bit more on the creative process? So, like, what inspired to do this comic? What inspired Peppermint Desert? Like, what came first? Was it this idea of an orphanage in the middle of this desert, the Peppermint Desert? Or was it the idea that these criminals have the superpower of luck? And then, you know, what, like, what came first? Yeah, or just for the sure. creative process in general. Um, I think what came first was definitely an image Uh that's kind of how a lot of my ideas start is just like, you know, a single image of like these two, you know, kind of like beatnik looking bandits uh, speeding across the desert. Uh, and I was like, okay, that's interesting. How can I make that into a story that's worth telling? And so part of it came from kind of my own feelings towards like luck in my life and how much of my art journey has been a result of luck and how much of it is actually like uh my own like skill uh and then um other parts of it are just like imagery that i think is cool i think old cars are cool i think uh like devils are fun i wanted to set the story in a desert but i thought it would be more fun if i if it had this kind of surreal bend to it so um I was thinking what I could do with that. And then I thought like, okay, well, I have these two main characters, like a guy and a girl. They kind of reminded me of uh, the White Stripes, the band who's like one of my uh -huh. favorite bands. So I like, you know, they have this kind of like red and white peppermint aesthetic. And I was like, okay, what if I took that idea and then built a world around it? Um, you know, things like that. It's kind of like a lot of different things from different places that over time just kind of coagulated into this idea. Uh, well, do you have any uh, collaborators with, on Peppermint Desert, or is it just you doing this it, pretty much all It is, for the most part, just been me. Uh, I wrote it myself. I'm illustrating it myself. Uh, I'm doing it as my uh, thesis project for my final oh. year of college. So um, I've had a lot of input from uh, my teachers, uh, especially the teachers that I have been working on this under in their specific classes, uh, Brock Goodman and uh, Kathy Gendron. Both of them have been extremely helpful in um, just kind of guiding me through the process and, um, you know, being very, very supportive, looking over the manuscript, uh, helping me out with kind of more technical 
issues and stuff. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's uh, it's a it's a one man project. Um, what advice could you offer to other creatives um, that you've learned that you wish someone would told you when you first started? So even, I guess, from your I guess your mentors or your professors, like mm -hmm. even from what they've said, like man, I wish someone would have told me this when like when I first started. Um, yeah, I think it a lot of it boils down to, especially in comics, is just to like do it don't, and don't let anything get in the way of just like starting. I think especially in comics, because the nature of it, having multiple pages, multiple panels per page, it's very um, intimidating uh, starting out and just getting a project off the ground. Um, and the best way to circumvent that is just to like, like write something and commit to it and do it. Uh, and that's kind of half the battle. And then the other, you know, half of that is um, make the kind of art that you want to make, uh, which sounds like obvious, but I think especially like if you hang around art schools, there's a lot of, um, there's this idea that like you have to be making art in a certain house style or that should cater towards like a certain expectation of you know what is expected of an artist in your field and i, I think the biggest lesson i've learned is um that you're always going to get better results if you follow your heart and uh try to make things for you um if that makes sense yeah yeah it does make sense because i know like when you're in in school and pursuing art because I I majored in graphic design right and there's this expectation of what you're supposed to be making versus what it is that you actually want to make and then you really don't know how to do any of it so it's like you kind of have to do what the professors are expecting you to do or any type of um I guess prospective employers want you to do whereas mm -hmm. this is what I want to do so yeah. how do I how do I cope with the struggle with doing yeah, that? So yeah, for I, I sure. Didn't. I mean, like the um the thing that's helped me a lot is um crap, I lost my train of thought. Um sorry, sorry, sorry. No, it's uh, I actually that happened to me a couple of days ago. <laughs> what was I talking about? And then it came back to me eventually. No, yeah, definitely like um just making the type of stuff that you want to make uh, and being true to yourself. Oh, this is what it was, is that um, I'm really, really fortunate to be in a position where I'm in art school, I'm studying illustration, and I have this space uh, and this time in my life where I don't have to, I don't have to make the type of art that is like expected of an illustration major. I have this opportunity to do whatever I want. Uh, and, you know, once I graduate and I have to like enter, you know, the job field and, and really start like making money with a capital M, uh, I'm not going to really have maybe as much time as I'd like to like explore things that are purely creative. Uh, so in that way, it's really, really nice to be able to have this time to just floor it on something that you know feels a hundred percent me and um you know even if i crash and burn after i graduate from this place i'm still gonna have one killer comic book that was like that has my name on it uh-huh yeah well i was looking at your your website all sorrows.com and yeah. uh i guess is i guess the it's called fog chapter one is like like your first um, chapter one, the blue rose, is that like your yeah. first published work? I guess that you intentionally put out there for everyone to see. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I mean, like I made like tiny little like cartoon comics when I was like a kid, but, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this like new era of me, like really taking it seriously is, uh, yeah, that was the summer between my freshman and sophomore years of college. Um, and I was kind of in that space again of like having to like, I was like, oh God, like I, I should be you know, learning how to paint better. I should be making, you know, like book covers or things that are more commercial. And I was like trying to like get my painting skills better. And then 
at one point that summer, I was like, well, the thing that I really want to do is comics. So like, I should like make a comic. Mm -hmm. And perhaps misguidedly, I decided to do, you know, this big epic that was going to be multiple chapters and, you know, like kind of have to like write each chapter after the last. I didn't really have like an overarching plan. Like the way I was writing that series was very like reactive. And so, yeah, uh, chapter one of Fog was um, kind of my first foray into like really trying to take comics seriously. Um, And I was able to do four chapters of that series so far. I think right now it's going to be on the back burner for a while. I have some ideas about what I could maybe want to do with it later on. But, yeah, uh, I see. Yeah. The, I see the four here, and it's like it is chapter one. The blue rose is like a painter type style. Mm-hmm. Um, but then as you go on to um, chapter uh, two, three, and four, it, you can see how it goes more into like illustrative comic style, and it looks like you have a lot more confidence, kind of in your work. Like yeah. you definitely know this is like this is your style of work because it's been more and more consistent in a way it kind of has like a like a horror feel to it too yeah especially Uh, that 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 fourth one for sure uh no yeah I think one of my like goals when I set out to do fog was I very much wanted it to be a um an ongoing experiment or like a playground for me to play around with style um because you know I really liked like the kind of watercolor feel of the first one. I liked like Kingdom Come and Harrow County and these kind of more painterly comics that felt like really, really unique. Uh, And then like I did nine pages of a watercolor comic and I was like, okay, I'm going to keep doing this. The first lesson that I learned was like, I need to learn how to economize my time. So like watercolor isn't always going to be, um, you know, the most practical option. So then I started playing with like, ink, different applications of ink. Uh, Chapter two was like all using brush pens. Uh, Chapter three was using like a pen and nib. Uh, Mm -hmm. And then chapter four was using like a straight up like traditional brush and then like a little bit of brush pen for detail. Um, And it was definitely like an ongoing thing of like seeing what worked, seeing what didn't, getting better at drawing. you know, I got input from a couple of my professors on um, some of the later chapters. And then, yeah, I think chapter four, as you said, was uh, the point where I started to feel really confident in my ability to do this. I think that was kind of like an, an epiphany where I was like, all right, I could see myself like settling into this art style. Yeah, I think it it's easier and more acceptable to kind of go against the grain or go against what it is you've been taught to do or conditioned to do when you have Mm -hmm. a lot more confidence in your work and you kind of have an not even an idea but you know where you want to go with it because you know at that age in high school and in college even when you come out of college I know I was until I was like maybe 25 26 whereas you know you don't really have any idea, like I've said before, you don't have any idea where you want to go, what you want to do. You want to try all kinds of different things and explore. Mm-hmm. But when you're in school, you kind of have to do what you're told, again, because you don't really have any idea what to do. It's not until you go out and live your life. Even, you know, you may have tried some in college, but it's not until you really get out there and like live your life and having to juggle your passions and bills at the same time and really yeah for sure like reality of everything is juggling that that's when you really get into what it is that you like to do and I would hope at least attempt to to go for it and if you have any success in it to keep going on with it it seems like you're like you've really found your your niche your your style with like the rockabilly colorful type almost like a psychedelic yeah yeah I I really like mixing like the kind of psychedelic bend with like period stuff um I think like like the the rockabilly thing is definitely like something that that interests me um you know every project that I do and you can see it in fog and you can see it in like the other like one-off comics I have on my website is that I always like to have a theme I like to have like a time period for peppermint Mm -hmm. desert it's like the 50s 
And then for Fog, it's kind of like this weird hybrid of like Victorian England slash like 1930s America uh-huh. thing. But yeah, that is, that is what I enjoy. And that's like, that is my niche. And that's something that I, that I hopefully will get to explore a little bit more. And I think like, as I've been spending a lot of time, uh, especially in the past year, like kind of building my online brand and, you know, putting more stuff out onto the internet, marketing myself, um, having, you know, that's kind of like retro inspired, uh, really like kind of tactile feel is, um, something that I feel really at home in and something I try to bring into all my stuff, even when like I get freelance work from, uh, from outside, uh, sources. I mean, well, do they come to you for your style? Cause I mean, or this is something that you kind of just put your services out there. Cause it seems uh, like with this style, it seems like people would come to you and would it kind of almost expect it in a way. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've had a very limited amount of that. I'm always welcome for people to come and uh, come and hire me. But yeah, I've gotten, I've, I've been lucky enough to uh, score a couple jobs. Uh, things that aren't finished yet, so I can't really talk about them. But uh, a, a, couple, a couple freelance gigs that came in, really liked my style, the kind of, um, again, like psychedelic um, thing that I, that I do. And uh, I've been, I've been really happy to, to work with some folks on, uh, with, you know, within that style uh, to, to serve their interests, but also to kind of get off doing my own thing uh, along with that. So that's been, that's been really gratifying. Well, that's, that's cool. Especially being in, in school, still in school and having time, like, I'm, I'm assuming you have the time to actually do these, these, this freelance work. So it's, it's a little bit of time tight. you have left. <laughs> it's tight, but I'm working, I'm, it's working out so far. Okay. Well, my last question for you, Sean, is what is your idea of success? So I asked that, I ask creators that because if we're not getting regular paychecks from, from a full-time job or making consistent revenue from our art, we're considered failures or we consider ourselves failures. Many of us will put our dreams and projects on the back burner or give them up altogether because this career path can be highly intimidating and competitive. So what is your idea of quote unquote success? That's a really great question. Uh, and I am going to start off by saying that I'm super self-aware in the fact that like, I am very much like at the beginning of my like creative career, uh-huh. like arguably I have like barely even started it. So my idea of success right now is like <laughs> almost any semblance of like financial stability. However, uh-huh. um, you know, like if you're, oh, oops. If you're asking me what my idea of success is, like as a storyteller, it's like just being able to get my stuff out there and have people read it and care about it and hopefully affect someone in a positive way. Um, Because, you know, the way that I tend to write tends to be very like, like I tend to write in these little like parables, Uh, you know, Fog always had this kind of controlling idea of like love, mystery, like being self-aware peppermint desert is about luck um you know it's i'm always trying to like not necessarily teach a lesson but like explore an emotion or like an idea or something that's close to me and so hopefully if that speaks to somebody that would be my idea of success yeah i pretty much ask everybody that regardless regardless of the stage that they're in in their career or uh hobby or whatever it is that they're doing because everyone gives such different answers like right now makes sense that you want financial stability with your with your um with your artwork um your comics i should say because i've spoken with someone else and they say like success i guess is, is fluid in a way depending on where you are in your life it changes like he had been doing his um illustrations for like 30 years he worked in photography and he worked for a magazine for a while as well and then now he's getting more and more to doing his own type of stuff so it it changed from the financial stability to the freedom to do whatever that he wanted to do yeah and you know being able to continue to do whatever he wanted to do with 
the I guess maybe money that he saved or the financial backing of patrons or whatever it may be. So yeah, it's it's fluid in a way, but I try to ask everybody the same questions because everybody gives different answers. Yeah, for sure. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to touch on about uh, Peppermint Desert that I may have missed? Uh, do you have a definitive date? Because I know it's supposed to be like a spring release, but you know, like, yes. do you have a month or? I am always keeping people posted on on my socials about that. At the moment, there is not a specific day. I'm looking at probably like a May release. Um, I want to do a digital release and a limited print run. Um, the method of which I will be doing that is yet to be determined. I was going to maybe do Gumroad, but in the light of everything that's been going on with Gumroad, probably not anymore. Uh, so we'll see, but definitely um, around like May, June at the latest, I'm shooting for May. Um, I post about Peppermint Desert constantly uh yeah, I've seen on, it. on twitter and instagram so the moment i have an idea of specific day it will it will be known all right well again i want to thank the creator and illustrator of the upcoming comic peppermint desert sean peacock i highly recommend our listeners to check out sean's website and socials for updates on peppermint desert all listed in this episode's details Again, I'm K.S. Garner, and you have been listening to the Solo Nerdbook Podcast. Thank you. <laughs>